Do you feel you are destined to become a pilot but everyone around you doesn't believe you have what it takes to succeed? In this video I'm going to share with you the character traits that every pilot needs to have to be able to soar high above the clouds as a profession. Happy New Year friends and followers and welcome to the first video of 2020. It's a brand new year full of goals and aspirations and if one of your goals is to become a pilot in 2020 but you're not sure if this is the right career path for you then hopefully this video will help you figure that out. If you're new to my channel, my name is Yaro and I take the mystery out of the aviation industry so consider subscribing for more videos just like this. In this video I'm going to list 9 character traits that I think every pilot must have to be successful in this career. Most character traits are learned and developed throughout your pilot career, but some have to be natural character traits that cannot be taught. As a disclaimer, these traits are based on my professional opinion and experience in the industry and anyone can become a pilot with enough hard work and dedication. But without certain traits, the chances of you not succeeding are much higher and when you're spending $100,000 on training, you want to make sure before you start. This is going to be a longer episode than normal because I want to be thorough, so let's start with trait number one. The first and most important character trait is self-motivation. Becoming a pilot is a long challenging road with many hurdles and setbacks. Therefore you need to be a hardworking, self-motivating person that doesn't easily give up. This profession is best suited for type A individuals, go-getters, self-starters and perfectionists. Nobody's gonna hold your hand in this industry and motivational pep talks are only gonna get you so far. Flying an airplane takes a lot of practice, especially if you want to be great at it. And every hour in an airplane costs money, a lot of money. So if you easily give up and get frustrated, you will not get through your lessons or you'll run out of money and that'll be the end of your flying career. If a real emergency happens in the air, are you also going to quit and give up when the going gets tough or are you going to fight until you succeed? This attitude is what washes a lot of people out of this industry. It spits out the weak and only the mentally strong survive. This is why motivation is the number one trait in my opinion. Because you need to be able to dig deep, really deep when the going gets tough. Because when it comes to life and death, failure is not an option. If you are not a very ambitious person or good enough is okay with you, then this profession might not be the right fit. Pilots are usually very competitive or type A personalities because you're also competing with thousands of pilots throughout your whole career, so winning has to be important to you. My personal approach is if you're not first, you're last, and that has helped me keep my edge over my competition. The second trait is self-discipline. In order to be successful in your flight training and then later in your flying career, you need to be able to have self-discipline and be strict with yourself and not allow yourself to become lazy or complacent. Everything in aviation revolves around safety and small mistakes that are insignificant on the ground can snowball into huge mistakes in the air that can lead to accidents or death. You don't get a do-over in aviation and a common saying is learn from the mistakes of others because you won't live long enough to make them all yourself. Therefore, from day one of flight training, you will have procedures drilled into your head and then later in your flying career, you will have to follow SOPs, which are designed to minimize risk and they eventually become muscle memory. So if an emergency does happen, you will react without thinking. Being disciplined and not cutting corners will also help you build good decision-making skills and help you pass all of your flight tests. Pilots are tested every six months in the simulator, so if you become lazy it won't take you long to wash out because you failed a few flight tests and get fired by the company. A pilot performs the same checklist every single day, the same SOPs, the exact same way, every time. The theory behind that is once you do a task the exact same way long enough, it becomes muscle memory, so if something happens not standard, you will be able to catch it more quickly because it's unusual and not part of the routine. SOPs are like a choreographed song and dance routine that we do in the flight deck every single time we get in there. When we get to the flight deck everything is done the exact same way every single time. From the airplane system checks to the checklists to getting weather, programming the flight management computer, getting numbers from dispatch and doing all the checklists. 
I'm like that even at home, where I have a specific place for all my things, I have my daily morning routine, and I like certain things done a very specific way. For me, this streamlines my day and makes everything more efficient instead of figuring it out every single day. Between being on the road 16 days a month, running my coffee business, making YouTube videos and being a father, efficiency is what allows me to do all of that. If I simply woke up every morning and said, what am I gonna do today? Then I wouldn't be able to accomplish half of the things I do now, and self-discipline has a lot to do with that. The third trait you need is knowledge. Pilots are learning throughout their whole career, so if you don't like learning, this career will be difficult, and if you don't have self-discipline to push yourself to learn, you will not succeed. The volume of information that pilots need to learn can be overwhelming, and I've adapted a quote about being an entrepreneur that I think fits well here. An entrepreneur is someone who knows a little about many things, versus a professional who knows a lot about one thing. Pilots need to be like entrepreneurs, because first and foremost we need to be pilots and know how to fly the airplane, then we need to be a mechanic and know the systems and our whole airplane inside and out, then we need to be meteorologists and be able to learn how to analyze, interpret and understand weather, we need to be great communicators to be able to not only communicate on the radio, but also with our crew and the passengers. We need to be versed in air law and regulations, as well as international rules and laws once you start flying overseas. Understand human physiology and what effect that has on the human body in flying and many other topics. Once you get to the airlines then you have to learn all the company procedures, their SOPs and constantly be refreshing your mind with the airplane systems and emergencies and getting yourself ready for sim. I always joke that I should have a master's degree by now with how many exams and flight tests I've had to pass over my career. Pilots should have a thirst for knowledge, and even outside of aviation, I'm always learning, studying something new and expanding my knowledge. And I like to say, once you know something, you can't unknow it. One of my favorite quotes is, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Therefore knowledge is important, and only through knowledge will you know if you're making the right decisions. And this leads us to trait number four. Trait four is making good and accurate decisions. Good decision making skills is one of the traits that you will build and develop throughout your whole pilot career. In order to make a good decision you first need to gather all of the facts, then pick the best course of action, make a plan, execute that plan, then assess the results and repeat the whole process. A pilot's job is to safely get the airplane from point A to point B and how we do that is by trapping errors. We are constantly absorbing information, analyzing that information in our heads and then running multiple scenarios about the different possible outcomes. Then we come up with a plan in the back of our minds for each scenario, so then we are ready to act if that scenario does happen. That's why after a 12 hour day our minds are exhausted from always analyzing information and trapping errors. When I was a flight instructor I would constantly bombard my students with what if type of questions. What would you do if your engine quit, if you got lost, if your radio failed, if your tire fell off, what would you do? This approach actually saved the life of one of my students who had a what if scenario happen to him in real life when his engine quit close to the ground and he was luckily able to make a safe emergency landing on a gravel road. Once you get good at coming up with solutions to different what if problems, you start to do it naturally in your head and you don't even notice you're doing it. But it is a learned skill to constantly come up with solutions. My slogan in life is, bring me solutions not problems. Anyone can come up with a hundred problems because it's easy, but coming up with solutions takes hard work and it switches how your brain works. This is what it means to make good decisions. You are making them by coming up with solutions for your problems and not just sitting there coming up with excuses. Excuses will not save your life in an emergency. I challenge all of you to try this in your everyday life. Start by coming up with three solutions for every problem you face throughout your day and let me know the results in the comments below. As you get better at making good decisions, then trait number five that will evolve is confidence. 
Of course it helps if you have internal confidence in yourself, but it's okay to be a little bit unsure of yourself in the beginning of your pilot career. Everything is tied together because as you build knowledge as a pilot, you start making better and better decisions, which in turn builds your confidence. The trap that you do have to avoid early on in your pilot career is overconfidence that leads to cockiness. Pilots are sometimes so quick to prove themselves that they fall into this trap of invincibility and if you don't have self-discipline, that can be a dangerous combination. Statistically speaking, a pilot is the most dangerous between 1000 and 1500 hours. Before 1000 hours, you are still learning or you're a flight instructor and maintaining good self-discipline and aren't given too much responsibility by the company and your chief pilot. But as you get over that thousand hour mark, you start to get more freedom and responsibility from your company. Maybe you upgrade to a bigger airplane and you finally start to feel like you've made it as a real pilot. This can lead to you cutting corners, pushing weather and putting yourself in a situation that you've never been before. And many pilots end up scaring themselves. Most insurance companies also won't let you be a captain on a multi-engine airplane until you have 1500 hours and an ATPL. Therefore, confidence is a double-edged sword. It takes confidence in yourself and your decision-making abilities to become a good pilot, but it's a fine line between confidence and thinking you know everything. That's why sometimes pilots can come across as cocky know-it-alls, but I'll be the first to admit that I don't know everything, but I do know a lot. So when you get to this point in your career, remember this advice and keep working hard on your self-discipline. As your confidence grows and you get better at making good decisions, then trait number six of staying calm under pressure is what will help you make those good decisions. When your engine is on fire and you have bells and whistles going on in the flight deck and the captain is calling for the emergency checklist and you have flight attendants dinging you from the back and air traffic control is wanting to know what is going on, staying calm under pressure is vital. Staying calm and prioritizing tasks under pressure is one of the greatest things the pilot must learn. When life or death decisions have to be made, getting overwhelmed and shutting down isn't going to be very helpful. Yes, it's an emergency situation and tasks have to be accomplished in an expedited manner, but rushing is not the answer. In sim, we like to say enjoy the emergency. Sometimes taking a second to think, analyze the information, then spring into action is the best thing you can do. By taking a moment to think, it will give you the opportunity to problem solve, quickly run through different scenarios in your head, and if you've been practicing coming up with solutions, you will be able to pick the best course of action to guarantee you the highest chance of success. If you actually listen to cockpit voice recordings during an emergency situation, the pilots are eerily calm, like nothing is happening at all. And that's simply from years of training and learning to stay calm under pressure. Southwest 1380 has an engine fire descending. Southwest 1380, uh, you're descending right now? Yes, sir, we're single engine descending, have a fire number one. Alright, Southwest 1380, uh... Okay, where would you like to go to? What airport? Give us a vector for your closest. Even during everyday life situations that cause most people to freak out, I usually stay cool as a cucumber because once you've been drilled with enough emergencies in the simulator, everything else is a walk in the park. The next trait a pilot must have is number seven, good communication. Communication is key when operating in the complex environments that we do. You are in communication with your crew, dispatch, air traffic controllers, passengers, ground crew, and many other people you encounter throughout your day. If you cannot communicate effectively or you are shy and don't speak up, that will be a huge disadvantage. There have been many aviation accidents due to a lack of communication, so therefore a new training area was developed in the 1970s called CRM. Every crew member these days has to go through CRM training, usually on an annual basis because learning to talk to people is important. CRM teaches you how to talk to people effectively, respectfully, and deliver information and vital facts in a manner that everyone understands. As well, throughout your pilot training and career, you are constantly being critiqued because there's no room for mistakes or complacency. If you are someone who doesn't take criticism easily, then this profession is not for you. Pilots are constantly tested, critiqued, and held to a high standard. 
there is no room for getting your feelings hurt, but with proper CRM, that should be mitigated. Aviation is a team job and you need to be an effective communicator. Part of communication is also being a good listener and approachable, which will help you with the next trait. Trait number eight is situational awareness. Situational awareness is the perception of environmental elements or events in time or space, the comprehension of their meaning and the projection of their future status. Essentially what all that means is you have to be aware of what is going on around you and being a good pilot requires a high level of situational awareness. We need to be able to see the big picture in order to mitigate risk and trap errors. The thing is as the brain becomes overwhelmed it starts to shed information and it reduces the amount of information we can absorb and process, essentially resulting in tunnel vision. If we don't get the information we need, then we can't make the good decisions that we need to make as pilots, therefore safety could be compromised. Staying calm under pressure prevents your brain from getting oversaturated and therefore shutting down and reducing your situational awareness. And by having good communication skills allows you to get the information that you need in order to make a good decision. This is why pilots train so much and have to learn a mountain of information so that the brain learns how to cope with this, process information quickly, and maintain a high level of situational awareness. This is why I can lead such a fast-paced, multitasking lifestyle because I'm simply used to functioning this way. I joke with my wife that sometimes I can see the future because of my situational awareness, I can see things coming from a mile away, while for others it's not even on their radar. And the final trait, the trait that rules them all is number nine, leadership. Actually, it's the opposite when it comes to leadership. You need to be able to master the previous eight traits that I talked about earlier to be a good leader. Of course, there are leaders who don't have good communication skills or leaders who do not have knowledge and make bad decisions, but to be a great leader, to lead and inspire others takes decades of hard work. This is also where experience comes in. You cannot all of a sudden become a good leader because you want to be. It takes years of years of sitting in that airplane seat, making good decision after good decision, and facing challenging situations that will test your resolve and perseverance. A good leader is also someone who wants to lead. That's why there are some pilots who never make airline captain because they simply don't possess the traits that would make for a great leader. But leadership is a learned skill and I have been a captain twice so far in my career. The first time flying air ambulance on a King Air and the second captain on a Q400 flying for my regional airline. Both positions allowed me to hone and develop my leadership skills and figure out what does and doesn't work and what I can improve on. Now I'm back as a first officer flying the Boeing 737 and it will take several years before I can become a captain again. But as I wait for my seniority to grow, I'm still learning and watching the decision making skills of my captains and learning what they do well and where there's room for improvement. I'm also participating in the decision making process and building my confidence flying the 737. This is why a pilot's resume is gauged by how many hours you have flown, because hours translate into years in the pilot seat, years of making good decisions and years of experience. So these are the nine traits I personally feel that every good pilot must possess. I'm not saying you cannot become a pilot if you don't possess all of these traits, but as long as you are aware of your own limitations, you know what you have to work on. No pilot is perfect, but as long as you are learning, pushing yourself, then that's all anyone can ever ask of you. If there are other traits you feel a pilot should have, let me know down in the comments below. If you liked the video, smash the like button, support the channel by trying my coffee, and I'll see you in the next video.